Uh, thank you very much. Um, it is, of course, a great honour to be on this platform, and thank you um, all here today. I've just got a couple of messages to read. Well, I'm not going to read them both, actually, because one of them is quite long, but I just want to let you know that we've had sisterly greetings from three Labour MSPs. Jane Mont, who sent a longer message. <laughs> Um, and uh, she, you know, she says that they're really sorry they can't be here with us, but they're sending us every good wish and talks about how inspiring it is to see women rising up everywhere in defence of their rights, and she means they mean you. So um, that's the message from those Labour MSPs. I also have a message from the mother of Magdalene Byrne. Um, Deborah, who sends huge love and support for the fantastic Women's Liberation Conference today. She particularly wants to thank all the women who came to Magdalene's memorial service at Conway Hall. If you want to be in touch with the family, can you please see Janice from Object? So it does fall now to me to make some closing remarks on behalf of Women's Place UK. And first of all, there are quite a lot of thank yous. I know we've said it already, but we really do need to give very huge thanks to UCL for hosting this event and demonstrating, <laughs> demonstrating a commitment to academic debate and women's rights. And I do want to single out the UCL Women's Liberation Special Interest Group. You've had the names before. These are an incredible bunch of women. They are the best hosts you could hope for, and you want them on your side in a fight. <laughs> I want to thank the UCL staff, the conference office, the security team, the bar, the catering and all the cleaning teams who have been brilliant today. Thank you so much for that. Uh, I want to thank our volunteer helpers and the stall holders. You've been amazing um, under you know, quite a lot of pressure. I don't know how we got 1,000 women into a conference in less than an hour, but that we did was down to all the helpers. So thank you very, very much. I want to thank the workers in the creche. <laughs> to our, our speakers, our facilitators, our contributors, there are 85 or more of you here today that have made this conference possible, and I want to thank every single one of you who has come here today. But I want to say something else about this movement and a little bit about the place of Women's Place UK in it. Women's Place UK came into this fight quite recently and we know that there are many people and many groups who have been campaigning for longer than us. We want to thank you for what you have done and what you continue to do. Women's Place UK was formed in September 2017, initially, as you've heard, to ensure that women's voices were heard in the GRA consultation, and it was during that campaign that we became really aware of the fragile state of women's rights in this country and realised that we needed to do something more about it. So we are organisers. I would say that was what characterises the women that make up Women's Place, and we know that there are a multitude of individuals, organisations, groups, and so on, with huge expertise and experience in the full range of, of women's lives. We understand that. And we also know that there are those who are working with women in their daily lives who do not receive the funding or support that other organisations do. We know that many of these groups have felt seriously constrained by threats to funding streams and therefore unable to enter fully into public debate. Women's Place UK feels no such constraints. <laughs> We are funded by our supporters through ticket sales and donations. If you want to know what our average donation is, it's £22. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, we are accountable only to our stated aims and to all those who support us. We have used the money we have raised to do what so many other women's organisations feel they simply can't do, and in some who just don't do, let's be honest, yeah. um, to ensure the, the voices of women are heard. And this funding has enabled us to organise and to amplify, and it has helped us fund this conference today. Thank you very much for your donations. <laughs> So 
So that money has helped us organise 26 public meetings. We've responded to consultations. We've lobbied. We've worked really hard to get women's voices in the media. And we've, we've organised a manifesto based on what women told us they needed. But we are not alone in doing this. There are many of us working in different ways, on different patches, with different perspectives and focus. And it is a beautiful thing. This is the women's liberation movement. Yep. This movement belongs to all of us, to all the women who can't be here, and to all the women who haven't yet joined. We are only here because of the work that women have done before us, and I think our work is to lay ground for the women who will come after. So the idea for this conference is not that it is the first word, or that it is the last word, or that it is the only word on women's liberation. We are here to mark 50 years since the first Women's Liberation Movement Conference in Oxford to reflect on what has, was won then and to build for what is needed now. Think back to the wins of the late 60s and 70s, the Equal Pay Act, the 1967 Abortion Act, the Sex Discrimination Act, the dramatic changes to women's education, economic depend independence, aspirations for our lives um, and our relationships. These things are now not just under threat, many have already been rolled back. We are alert to these threats and we are ready to step up to defend what has been won and to fight for more. We wanted to be part of organising this conference so that women could come together and meet, to take stock, to network, to plan, to get informed, to discuss and debate, to laugh, to leave with a hundred ideas of what we can do next in our communities to change the lives of women and girls for the better and to build a society that works for all. This conference has been put together by women on top of jobs and other responsibilities in our spare time. It has come about in the face of substantial and serious obstacles, and it is a testimony to the grit and determination of the women involved in organising it that we are here at all today. And I, I do want to again thank those women in particular because they have shown a steel that does this movement proud. It has come together because all of you have made it possible by offering your expertise, by offering to help, by being here. Think of this conference as a patchwork quilt made up of different pieces sewn by different people, all brought together in one rich, eclectic whole. It may well have the odd loose thread, but it has been pulled together with love and determination. So, we really hope you've enjoyed your day. We hope you have found it useful. We hope it has fired you up and made you feel strong because we are going to need all your strength and fire in the days to come. We need everyone here to go back to their communities and organize. If you are a member of a trade union or political party, look for like-minded people with whom you can influence policy. Work with others in your workplace, your social networks, your sports clubs, your book clubs. We need to build this movement in every village, town and city to ensure that women's rights and women's voices are, women's voices are heard and their rights are upheld. It cannot be left to those who have failed to speak or who are too constrained by funding streams to speak for women. It is down to us, all of us. This is a movement. We are the movement. Let's move. <laughs>